Grab your ulcer medication, Wargamers. Today, we are going to Spain. That's right. We're going to be playing some Napoleonic Skirmish using the excellent song of Drums and Shakos. We have done a little bit of Napoleonics using a song of Blades and Heroes, but now I am relying on the good faith and effort of some genuine Napoleonic Wargamers to do it right. Uh, this is, uh, and of course, Andreas Filigoy's rule set. But with the Song of Drums and Shakos, that was written by Sergio Laliscia. So it makes sense. We're going to go ahead and go to Spain. What you're looking at here is a 380-point French force. It consists of an infantry officer and, whoops, I got two too many. We're going to take off you and you. So just nine Frenchmen for a grand total of 380 points, and they have to hold a bridge. This is the aftermath of the Battle of Tres Verdes, and the French took it on the chin, and now they are in organized retreat. They've left behind this group of, hey, I miscounted again, one leader, and in Song of Terms, he is a 3-2 with a sword and pistol. He's got eight line veterans. Oh, this guy's hiding behind the tree. That's what it was. Those guys are 3-2. They've got a musket, and they are steadfast, meaning they have a plus one on morale. 380 points. Now, let's take a look at the Joy of Wargaming debut of 15mm Brits. And as you can see, there's more of them, as is so often the case. This is uh, going to be this is actually going to be a 600-point force. So you're looking at a 3-2 to two advantage by the British. And what you see here is a mounted leader. He is a cavalry NCO. And then five hussars. And the NCO is recognizable because he's got the flagless flagpole. We'll get there. And he is supported by one infantry leader. That's this fellow right here with the pike. And he has under his command ten line conscripts. Now those conscripts are green. So if they ever see anyone within a long distance tripled in combat, they have to make a morale test. That is 600 points worth of dudes. Let's pull back and take a look at the terrain, and I'll show you the victory conditions. Here is our terrain and so victory conditions. They're out, they have a numerical advantage, but their light cavalry is trying to pursue the main body of the French army. These line veterans have been left behind to secure this little crossing. As you can see, we've got a river here. And we've got a river crossing here. It's just a shallows. And then we've got another little ford right there where that gap is. Those are the only places where the stream is crossable. So we got two points to defend by these guys. They can start wherever they want. But they see what's happening pretty quick. Uh, other terrain items to be aware of. The swamp here is impassable. This is rough or broken ground. The field's up here, which means uh, half movement if you move through it. Or... Song of Blades, uh, when you move through it, your movement is reduced by half. The forests here, that's the templates, those cannot be entered by the cavalry. And of course, because it's rough or broken ground, your movement is reduced to the next size step down. The hedge is just uh, soft cover, uh, but it is a defensible position. And then we've got a couple of isolated trees as well. The road doesn't have any effect on movement. It's just there for flavor. And also for our victory conditions because what's going to happen is the foot boys are going to appear on this road in turn one i don't know who's going first yet we'll roll for initiative actually we'll let them go first we'll let them deploy and then they're going to come on here on turn one on turn three the brits are going to come on or the british cavalry is going to come on right here so essentially the story is the line boys have actually reached the crossroads first. They're supposed to secure this crossroad only to find out that they've been beaten to the punch by this rear guard. They need to secure it so that at least four of these cavalrymen can exit via that point right there. You with me? So that's our victory conditions. If four cavalrymen get across the river and off that point, the Brits win. Any other situation, if the, if the, Brit, if the French can kill three of those horses... Game over, the French win, because there won't be enough of the light cavalry to do any damage once they actually get there. 
So now the question, oh, a couple more, just little bits in detail here. I don't have my measuring stick, so I'm just going to go ahead and use metric. I'm going to use the rules. I'm going to use oh, centimeters. I'm a member of SAM, Scientists Against Metric. Yeah, short is going to be 5, medium is going to be 8, and long is going to be 12. Other than that, I think we could just dive right in. You've seen me play Song of Blades before. There are a couple of uh, fun little wrinkles for Napoleonics, particularly with as the muskets go and ranges and whatnot, but we'll just kind of cover those as they come up. In the meantime, let me get our boys set up, and we'll, we'll get things rolling. All right, let's survey this battlefield real quick. As always, we'll use the blue die in combat for the French, the red for the red coats, and we'll use the three bright yellow for activation, so you can keep me honest. The French commander is elected to put three of his boys back here as a backstop and keep the other five right here inside this, I guess you could call it a mini fort. He is anticipating, he has seen these guys on the way. And remember that the Redcoats, it doesn't matter if all of these, these uh, infantrymen die, these guys have three turns to try to clear out as many as possible. The difficulty that the French commander faces is if the cavalry crosses here, he does not have line of sight anymore. And the uh, range of the muskets is going to be about 36. So they can reach pretty much anywhere on the board except he's got the difficulty that these woods are going to block line of sight. All right. So what he's got is three guys here. And the good news is about the woods is that the horses cannot charge. The cavalrymen can't charge into the woods. So they're actually relatively safe. Again, the woods also serve as soft cover. So it's going to be a bit of a gauntlet for those cavalrymen. He may be able to send his cavalrymen in here to tear these guys up. Maybe send two in so the other four can race along. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. In the meantime, we are ready to get started. So let's zoom in on these Brits and see what they do. The French defenders are as ready as they're going to get, so we'll take the first action with the British. And that leader is going to go ahead and activate on threes. He gets a total of, we'll go ahead and re-roll that just to keep it fair. We'll call that a four, three, and a five. So he is going to move up eight centimeters. And then he's going to order, he's got two orders he can do as a group move. So he's going to use them both. He's going to order the first group to go ahead and take one action to advance. And with a four, they do. And with the second group, he says advance. And with another four, they do. So all of these guys are going to move up six, well, eight inches. Eight centimeters, excuse me, to there. The French are going to hold their actions. These three fellows in the woods here can see, but they are just out of range. It's 36 centimeters. You know, I take it back. We got one guy here that has a shot. The rest of these guys, I think maybe we have two. Yeah, we got two guys that can take a shot at the end of this. So let's go ahead and for the first guy... We are going to try to make a shot, and it's going to be, uh, those guys activate on, those are veterans, so they activate on threes, and he has a musket, which has a range when they fire it, well, let's check the range, shall we? Uh, from there to there is 24 and 24, so they are just within two range bands, which means they are only at plus one with the musket. So this first guy, since he has two successes, he can go ahead and aim. He is going to be at plus two altogether. So for the first shot, we are at plus two for the blue die. And with a difference of seven to five... Oh, uh, wait a second. If you fire an aim shot, it costs two actions but it reduces by one. So this is not a seven to five. It's actually a six to four. That may be important later on. Because he won with a five, this old boy here recoils out of line. That may be important later on. The other guy that has a shot is going to take all three actions, hoping to get two successes, and he only gets one. So he's going to fire a wild shot at this guy, and that is going to be at a total of plus one to the blue die. So the French guy wins with a 6 and a 5, and he winds up recoiling back 1, so all we did was kind of offset. Not a great result. Once these guys have fired, I'm going to go ahead and mark them with a yellow chip. 
signifying that it's time to reload. But those two failures mean even if the French wanted to, they could not continue. On to turn number two. And I think it's time to put a little little remember ball, mem member ball, whatever, whatever it is. You, you um, Harry Potter nerds know what I'm talking about. To help us remember what turn we're on. The Brits are going to go ahead and take our leader, once again, is going to take three actions, looking for threes. He gets his first action, and there's one of the things you do that you can order is, there's a, um, where is it? There's a way to regroup. That might be what we need to do. Russell, Russell, Russell. Any number of models within long distance, he can, uh, all models part of the group, you know, it doesn't matter, because what he can do is he can say, look, you first uh, f five guys, so he's going to use this to issue an order. And we're looking for just one success here. And on a four and a two, we get to one. So they're going to move up a second time, and they all move eight centimeters to here now. These first six guys, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oop, four, five, six, there we go. And then he will go ahead and move to here. This puts him in a situation where he's not closest. No snipers, these are just veterans. They fire as a group, so that's his second action. And then he's going to use his third action to give these guys a group move order and say, hey, why don't you try to activate three times? I guess we'll roll over here. They get to move twice, so they can move a total of 16 centimeters, and they're not going to mess around. They're going to go ahead and rush right up to here, and maybe we'll see if we can do some hand-to-hand -hand combat. Maybe we'll bring these guys over one more time, or maybe we'll just open fire next turn. In the meantime, that's all these guys can do for the end of turn number two. For the French turn number two, it takes two actions to reload. So let's take it one at a time. Uh, this, hmm, hmm, ba -ba 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 -ba. our infantry leader activates on a three plus. So why don't we go, you know what, why don't we go ahead and uh, try to take one action each, which each of these guys. Now they are in range, they're at long range, so they're going to be shooting at zeros, but hey, at least they get to act. So what I'm going to do, they're each going to act once. So I'm going to roll all three activations. And with a 1, 2, and a 5, only one of them has the stones to get off a shot. And he's going to fire wild at plus 1. He's shooting at the nearest guy, which will just designate this guy. And it's going to be the same thing. He is shooting at long range, so that's going to be even Stevens. And with a tie, who wins ties? Who wins ties? Very cool game for making me do the hard stuff early. This is how we learn, isn't it? If the result is a tie, nothing happens. And which guy is it? We'll just go two, four, six. So Mr. Middle here has fired his musket and will have to reload before he can shoot again. And then we're going to roll for the two guys that are trying to reload. They activate on threes, so the first guy only gets one action. The second guy, uh, you know what, he's going to use that action to just kind of pull back to here. So he's out of harm's way. The second guy does reload, but he has now acted. Then we've got a guy who can just fire away. He's going to try to activate twice. He only gets one activation, so he shoots. Now, he is at close range, I think. Yeah, within 12 centimeters. So he's shooting at this guy, and he's at plus two for the blue die. All right, now here's where things get interesting, because this is a seven versus a one. means he has tripled the defensive score. All of these guys are green, and they all have to make a morale check. Actually, it's everyone within eight centimeters, which if we of the of the dead guy so if we lay this down it's going to be the front rank here well he's dead he's just straight up out of the fight these three guys each have to make a morale check so we'll start with the guy in front we'll go one two three 
And for every failure, and again, they need uh, four to succeed. For every failure, they're going to run away. So that guy runs away once. The second guy runs away once. And the third guy runs away once. Oh, no. No, no, no. I got that backwards. He moves once. These guys move twice. So we'll move uh, 30 direct to, to the nearest table edge, which I think actually is going to be this way, isn't it? 21. Yeah, nearest table edge. They're actually going to run off this way. So there's 8. And then these guys each run 16, which is going to put them right here. And that's it. Since they're still on the table, they can still go. Now we've got three guys. We're going to go one, two, three, and we'll roll for the first one. He succeeds all three times. The second one is going to fail all three times. So he just runs off the table. And the third one is going to succeed with all three. So one extra guy gone. These guys are, are kind of floating on their own. And... This guy, so let's make sure we mark who fired. Here's old uh, Marksman Pierre here. Did a bang-up job chasing them away. Now, that does change things a little bit. Uh, our second shooter over here is going to have a shot at medium range. So he's only at plus one, if he can even score his action. I guess I should put him on his reload me. If you roll a 1 on your shooting die, you roll another d6 on a 1, you're out of ammo for the rest of the game. We'll put a yellow marker down for that. So the second shot of the turn, let's see if Jacques there can match his buddy. He's only going to try twice. He needs a 4. He gets both. So he is going to be able to take an aim shot, which means the red die is at minus 1, the blue die is at plus 1, and we'll call that... A five and a two. Oh no, it's yeah, plus one. So it's a five and a two. It's a doubling, not a tripling. He hit with a an even number. So that means he is knocked down. Like so. Boy, I got a lot of grass here. When you fall in combat, uh, he is still actively fighting. Uh, but he is at the mercy. He's attacked at plus two from here on out. So there's our second shot. And then uh, it's minus... Well, it's weird. That's plus two in melee. I have one more shot with this guy shooting at this last guy that's up. And, uh, well, I take it back. Let me think about this. He's only going to try two actions. He fails both times, and it becomes turn number three. On turn number three... Our Oh my goodness, here come the cavalry. So the British guys are going to go first. There is interpenetration, so our cavalry are going to come on right down here. And now things get complicated for the French, particularly given that um, they need to be doing some reloading. We'll start with the British. First thing we're going to do is roll for our leader. And he is a leader who activates on threes. We're going to try twice. And he gets one action. So he will... Uh, he will order these four guys to fire at... Um, well, they're not touching bases. Who are they going to shoot at? They're going to fire at this guy. Well, he's actually going to give the... Let's do this. He's going to tell. He's going to order them to fire. They activate on fours. And they get two actions. That means that all four of these guys get to take two actions. And it's going to be easy. All four are going to take shots at these guys. Now, because they have two actions, they're going to be aim shots. They are going to be shooting at minus one because the target is behind cover. They are going to be uh, defending at minus one because of the aimed shots. So we'll just roll four times, and we're going to roll for this target first. And both dice are at minus one. So the Brit wins with a four, which knocks him down. And then for the second shot, we're going to fire at this guy. 
Oh, you know what? I forgot, though. I take it back. These are muskets that are shooting at, uh, is it medium range? Yeah, 24. So they're shooting at medium range, which means they have an additional plus one. So the red die is actually at plus one versus minus one altogether. Oh, no, 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 no. It's evens. That's what it is. It's plus one for the... Hmm. Let's get it straight. Plus one for medium range. Minus one for the cover is an even Steven. Okay. He is at minus one because of the aim shot. So he survives the second. The third shot is going to be a two versus a... Wait, it's an even versus a zero. That is a Dublin. That is a kill. So the first of the Frenchies has gone down. Now these guys are veterans, they're not green, so they don't have to suffer a morale check. And then we fire for that fourth shot is going to be a plus one versus... Now I just figured this out. How am I going to go through this again? This is at zero versus a minus one, so a four versus a three. This is an even number, which means we're going to knock down another French guy. Now we've finally finished... All four of these guys. So we can do something interesting. And the question is, do we want to bring these guys up? I think we do. I think we want to try to get them... Uh, kind of back in the game. Now, it does take a movement. I think what we'll do is you move up to here and then an action to get over. So we'll try to activate this guy twice. We're looking for fours. He gets two actions. And he is just eight centimeters away, so he can run up to here. Then this guy will also try to activate twice. And with a five and a three, he only gets one. But that does mean that he can come up to here and put pressure. And then this third guy is going to get two activations. And he can move to, let's call it right about here. Now, the reason I'm sending these guys over this way is... Um, they're going to act as a screening force for our cavalry, who are the only British left to go on this third turn. And when they come in, they're going to go ahead and race around that direction. We'll go ahead and make for that ford right there. The leader is going to have to go first. He is at the head of the column, and he needs a minimum of two orders. So that's what we're going to do. And this could be interesting. Uh, if we assume they're like right on the table edge... You know what? We might as well give him all three. He activates on threes. So he gets two actions. He's going to use his first action, and they move long. So he's going to use his first action to come on the board, and he moves to right there. Then he uses his second action to say, Follow me, boyos! Since it's the last action of the game, or of the turn, I should say, their phase in the third turn... They're going to go ahead and activate on fours. These are hussars. They get two actions. So they can move a total of 24 centimeters. And they're actually going to race out ahead of him. They're very excited. And we're going to put them something like... I guess we'll put them side by side. They can fit through that gap, right? And like that. So now the cavalry are on the board... And life just got more complicated for the French. Fine. If you're going to go that way, first thing the French are going to do is try to move this guy over so he's ready to take a shot. He activates on threes, and he gets two actions. So he will slide on over here and get ready to take fire. The second guy over there is going to do the same. And with a five and a six... He's going to slide over here and be ready to fire. And then that third guy is just going to... Ooh, let's see if we can... Oh, who do we want to do here? We will start off by trying to recover this fallen model. He just needs to roll a four to stand, or a three to stand up. So he stands up, and that's all he's going to do. This second model is also going to roll one die. He is just going to stand up. And now we have to do a bunch of reloading. You know, I tell you, I'm inclined. I don't like him being that close to my leader. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll 
we'll, we'll roll to see if we can reload this guy. Looking for threes. Oh, two failures. We're done. On to turn four. I mean, turns don't matter anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. It's the British turn. And um, we're going to... Oh, you know, I didn't mark these guys. These guys have all fired. So our leader is going to activate. And he gets two actions. He is going to use his first action to... Uh, what do we do here? What do we do? Um, we'll order these guys to do something. And we'll roll for a 3-3 three, three, and a 6. So they only get one action. He says, advance. They will advance 8. And because they're still in long, he's going to try and give them another order. And they... Oh, you know what, though? I'm sorry, they failed twice, so the British turn is over. It's on to the French turn. And we're going to go ahead and give these two guys a group order. The leader is going to go first. He's going to say, guys, hop to it, would you? He gets two actions. So he's going to give these guys an order and say, move over here to clear your line of fire, and then take a shot. So that's his first action. Will actually be to move to here. His second action will be to give these guys an order, and I suppose I should probably roll for them, huh? Looking for threes. They get two actions, so they're going to move over here, and they're going to open fire at this guy. And I think they're at close range now. Yes. Since they are not... Right. So at close range... They are at plus two to hit this guy. Plus two to the blue die. And we got two shots. We're going to shoot at this guy first. And with a, that's going to be a miss. And our second shot is going to be plus two to the blue die. is a four versus a three. That's going to be a hit. It's going to force him to recoil. Mm, he's going to have to recoil into this guy. I need to check and see what that means. In the meantime, they have taking their shot. So we'll mark that down. And when you recoil... Okay, so since he can't recoil because he's in the way, this model, fall down, go boom. Now we need to see... Now those guys are still too far away. They're going to hold on. We're going to try to reload this guy. They have a decent place to roll two dice. We need to get... We're going to try three times. And he gets three successes, so not only can it reload, but he can also move over to here. And then we're going to... So they fired, so we're going to try to reload this guy. And we fail, and it is now the British turn. And we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to activate this leader first. That leader activates on threes, and he is going to first move 12 centimeters, which puts him there. Then he's going to give these guys, these four, an order. And say, just, just move, would you? Get going. They activate on fours, which means they can move 24 centimeters. And he'll slide up to there. He will slide up to there. And then we'll just, I think they all have enough movement. Yeah. So we're just going to form line abreast, and we're just going to race. Then we got to see if this guy, who is not part of the group, he's going to try to stand up and keep up with his bros. Looking for fours. Boy, that looks like a two and a two to me, but it's kind of cocked. So that is definitely a two and two, and it is time for the French to go again. Man, you really got to prioritize in this game, don't you? Uh, the French now are going to... Fire with this guy. He's going to take two actions, looking for threes. He gets two actions, which means he's going to get to take an aim shot. Now, they are at extreme range. Nope, I think this first guy, center to center, he is just at 24. So that's going to be at a total of plus one for the blue and minus one for the red. That's a miss. The second shot is going to be at long range. Oh, I should wait. I should roll, huh? Two successes means an aim shot is going to be at minus one for the red. That's going to be a four versus a two. 
With a doubling, he is removed from the game. And then we have one more shot from this back row. A four and a four is going to be one more aim shot. It's going to be at, ooh, is it really? How far away is he from him? Yeah, long range, so it's even for the blue and a minus one for the red. So the blue gets a five, red gets a four, and with a recoil, he gets pushed back to there, which importantly breaks up the group, which will complicate the lives of those French. Let me drop down some reload markers and zoom in on the action. Still the British turn, so we're gonna try to activate this guy twice, looking for threes. With a five and a three, he's gonna stand up and he's gonna move long, cause he's, it'll catch up to that guy. Then we're going to activate this guy who will, well, let's just roll. He is a conscript activating on fours. He gets one action. And so he's going to, is he within eight? I think we can all agree he is within eight, so he is going to close to attack right there. They are both fighting with the same weapon, so it's going to be a straight roll off, red versus blue. Blue wins with a doubling, which is a kill. So he goes goodbye. No morale check it was not a tripling, and it's still the French turn. So we'll try and activate this guy next. And um, we need fours. So with fours, uh, he's just going to be able to make it over. And that's it. And then likewise, this guy is going to try to get over. And with two actions, not only... Well, let's see. He's going to have... Um, it's going to take him both actions to get inside the perimeter. And I like that, because it forces the British guy to decide what he's going to do. Is he going to risk reloading and shooting, or is he just going to go ahead and tie these guys up? Uh, then we have a guy over here who just wants to stand up and rejoin his friends. With a four, he can do it. His turn is over. And then we've got um, a leader here who's going to take three actions, and he's going to get two. So he'll move up to back these guys up, and he's going to give them an order. And all three guys activate on fours. They're only going to get one action, which is not enough to reload. So they're going to go ahead and advance eight centimeters to there. Now remember, I only have one chip down, but uh, these guys all need to reload. And things are getting tense, aren't they? That's it for the British. We move on to the French turn, and we got to figure out what we're going to do. Boss man, what you going to do? Uh, we only need to kill, well, we got to kill two more of those, of those boys. Activating on threes. We got three guys here who are each going to try to take three actions. The first guy gets two actions and reloads. The second guy gets two actions and reloads. And the third guy is only going to take two, and he gets one action, which will allow him to move eight centimeters to here. But he still needs to reload. He is going to issue a regroup order to these four guys. So they get three actions, and what this means is... Um, oh, how, now how does this work? Because they only got two actions... I think that means they can all reload. Do they have to? They must end their move in base-to-base -base contact with at least another member of the group. They cannot attack or shoot, but they can reload if they have enough actions, which they don't. So at a minimum, what's going to happen is these guys are all going to fall back to here. And I guess that's it. We're going to kind of protect them a little bit. There we go. Okay, we'll put him in the center. Say, on me, boyos. And maybe next turn they'll be able to do something. I think that's it for the for the French. Yeah, that's it. Okay, Brits are going to go. Uh, leader is this... Ooh. Yeah, we just got to hurry. We're going to use this leader first. He's going to take three actions. He's only going to get two. That should be enough, though. Because he'll move 12 centimeters to here. 
and then he will issue an order to let's issue an order to this group right here and they're gonna move 36 centimeters all together which a straight line will put them there so that's 14 uh, they'll have 22 left from there so they're gonna be able to wheel over to here and that essentially puts them out of sight of most of the guys now these guys do not have the same opportunity I'm gonna to have to move the first guy first same thing wow these guys are flying that's gonna be three and then he gets another six to there and then this guy is only gonna get two actions so he'll ride 24 to there and things are looking good for the Brits, particularly because... Um, All right, a little bit more of a ground's eye view here, but I think you can see what's going on. Our cavalry are just about to finish their flanking maneuver, and uh, our Brits are going to go. Uh, the leader... I should probably slide over this way just a little bit more. There we go. So here's our guy that just wants to join his fellas. He's going to try one action. He's going to get it, so he will be able to move... You know, let's go ahead and move him this way, maybe. He says, hey... Maybe I can uh, do some more good, like right about there. And then our leader is going to take... What do we want to do here? Um, these guys are within one long. Yeah, he's going to take three actions. He's going to get three actions. So he'll use one of them to move up to his guys. And then he'll use his second action to hmm, order them to go... And they're going to get two actions, so they're going to have to spend their first action getting over the hedge, and the second one getting stuck in. So everybody here is out of ammo. We're going to go two here, and we're going to go two on this guy. And then um, yeah, those guys are all out of ammo. And then I think... It does take an action to attack in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so I will use this guy is going to move up. He's only going to get one action, but at least he can contact this guy. And then we've got one more infantryman who's going to do the same thing. He's only going to get one action, but at least he can double-team this guy. So when it comes time to do actions in combat, these three veterans are each being double-teamed. It's now the French turn. And so we're going to start with these two guys in the woods. We're going to take a shot at this cavalryman. And we're going to need three. We're going to need two. Oh, he failed. The French turn is over. All we get is one shot at him at plus two. Oh, the fortunes of war. So we're looking at uh, red is at evens. And blue is at plus two. So an eight versus a four. That's a second kill. One more. And the British have lost. But it is the British turn. So the first thing we're going to do is try to get that first cavalryman off the board. They activate on threes, and that does it. So we've got one Call it one victory point. The second guy, if we can get threes, he only gets one action, but it is still their turn. Now, that's not enough, so he is still... St he hasn't quite made it off the board yet. Then we'll try to roll for this third Hussar. Activating on threes, he's only going to get to move 12... And that's going to be the end of the British turn now. You know, we still have to get him off the board, too. Mm, so what do we do? Um, the first thing we're going to do is ignore that scrum. And we're going to try to... we got one guy up there who can take a shot at that cavalryman. We're going to do all three actions. And we're going to fail. This is the tides of war. Then we're going to try to get... So now it's on to the British... We're going to try to get this cavalry guy off the board. We just need one success. We did. Now we're going to try to get him to safety. And we
We only get one success, but we're getting warmer. Now we gotta try to get this leader. We gotta race him along. We're looking for as many successes. We only get one, and the turn kicks over. Okay, that's all right. We're getting warmer. It's the French turn. And we're going to, this soldier is still loaded. He's gonna take all three actions. Now he only gets one action. So he'll use that action. He's got a shot right here. It's at long range. It's an even roll. Oh, you know, so maybe we'll, yeah, you know what? We're going to wait. We're going to go ahead and move him just the five centimeters over to here. And uh, we'll call it quits. So now it's on to the British. This is why this game appeals to me so much. There's stuff going on here. Nobody wants to risk failure because they're really focused on these two guys. If they both make it off the board, the Brits win. So it doesn't really matter what happens here. Maybe this guy gets a reload, but we're not gonna risk it. We do have a guy with a shot right here on the French side. He's gonna roll all three dice. He's gonna get that aimed shot, which is huge. Because now, not only is he at plus one, but that cavalryman is at, I'm sorry, he's at plus two, the red die is at minus one, and this might do it. So we're at four versus four, no effect. It doesn't do it. The good news is uh, he can try and take an action, and he gets two actions, so he'll reload. The other guy over here is also going to take three actions. He gets two actions. He is also going to reload. Quite the gauntlet here. And then we have a, another guy down here who's going to take three actions. He only gets one action. So I guess we'll move him out of the scrum. Get, we'll move him. I'm fat fingering it like a beast here, aren't I? All right. So we're going to move him out of the scrum to right here because you never know what might happen next. And then it's on to that cavalryman who uh, is going to only get one success, which is not quite enough to get off the board. Sorry, buddy. It's going to take one more action. You know what occurs to me? I've been doing this wrong the whole time. All of these guys have a combat skill of two. I should have been adding that to all these rolls, so some of those triples wouldn't have been. Some of those doubles wouldn't have been. But at least it's a mistake I've made across the board for everyone. Probably more costly for the British. Let's do it right, starting from here. That leader is going to try to get off the board. He's going to take all three of his actions, and he is going to gallop right on past. Now I should probably, the other thing is, for those of you that don't know, you use measuring gauges. You don't get to turn during your turn, except basically for these guys every 12 centimeters. So he stops right there. Uh, then, all right, now we're going to go ahead and resolve things down here. And hmm, what does that mean? We are going to roll for this guy first. He's going to make an attack. He's going to fail. This guy is going to make an attack, and he's going to succeed. So he's going to attack this guy, and he is going to be at the blue plus two, and the red is going to be at plus, no, 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 no. Pluses and minuses are very different in this game, very different. The, if you're fighting an outnumbered model, you have, where's the deal? If you're outnumbered, minus one. Okay, so... Because he's out minus, outnumbered, the French guy is at minus one. Uh, so he's at a total of plus one. Plus two for his combat, minus one. So he's at a total of plus one versus plus two to the blue die. And that's going to be a five versus a... No, it's going to be a six versus a seven. And with a even number, he falls down. And that's it. Then we're going to roll for, I got one guy here and one guy here. One of them gets to attack. It doesn't really matter which one. It's going to be the same situation where the blue guy is at plus one. And with a five versus a two, he's going to shove off. Then that last little melee scrum 
we're going to have one attack and that one attack is going to be the same thing. It's going to be plus, two, uh, plus one is a seven, plus two is a four. So seven, four, that's going to be another knockdown. And I think we're done. Oh no, we've got this guy over here is going to, uh, you know, he's, he's fully loaded over here. Over here, he's just off the way. There's a leader over here, too, you can't quite see. But he can actually take a shot at him. So he's going to go ahead and try to take two actions. He only gets one, but that's all he needs to get the shot off. And because he is at long range, he's at plus one, so he's got a total of plus three to his roll versus a plus two. And so that's going to be a seven versus an eight. And that's going to be no effect, except that now he's out of ammo. And then our leader over there is going to get to do three actions, of which he gets to take two. This is a one, as you can see. Now that uh, infantry leader does have a carbine. So he is going to move eight to here. And he's going to take a shot at this guy. And that is at 20 centimeters. He's at plus two. He's at a total of plus three. Plus three to the red die. And that's a kill. So that's one less shot the French can take at the cavalry men. And that's it for the cavalry men. So the French are in trouble now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take an action with this guy. He gets three actions, so he can slide out, make the aimed attack at that leader, and we'll roll and see. And I think I think we don't even need to do the math, but we'll do it, right? That's going to be plus two, plus four. He rolls a ten, and then this guy is at a total of plus one, so it's a ten versus a three. That's a troubling. The cavalryman goes down, and that is the end of the game. The British are only going to be able to get three of their cavalrymen off the board, which is not enough to have an effect to slow down the French retreat to the extent that they'd hoped. And although the British won at uh, Trace Verdes, they were not able to seal the deal by eliminating as many of the French as they would want to. It means that the pursuit of the French forces is going to be more difficult than expected. And although they lost 10 of their veteran line, excuse me, eight of their line veterans, and one of their officers, the French can consider this a victory. The sacrifice of these veterans probably saved the lives of hundreds of retreating soldiers somewhere off on the road to Madrid. So a great game, even though we did a few things wrong, we forgot about the combat skills. We will probably set up a similar scenario, maybe the same thing, and see how it changes if we bring the infantry on the left fork and the cavalry on the right fork. That would kind of force the cavalry to go right up through here. We'll see if it changes how the French approach the battle. Uh, I do like to refight battles and try new strategies and do different things. I think that it helps me understand the rules. And hey, if you get the combat thing right, it even works better. So thanks for watching. This one's been a bit longer than usual, but it's been a lot of fun. It's simple, it's, it's great, it's tense. Really came down to the last turn, but I mean, you know, doesn't it always? I mean, obviously, as soon as somebody won, that was the last turn. Kind of goes without saying. I'm praying for you.